healing after a narcissist. Why is it so hard? Why does it take so long? Why is it so frustrating when I'm trying to heal? A lot of times these are questions I get when I'm talking with people one-on-one, -on -one, whenever I'm doing coaching or Zoom calls or even live events where people are trying to figure out, like, what is it with healing? Like, how do I figure it out? There's two different types of people that I normally see on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to healing. Sometimes those are the people that show up and they're like, hey, I want to get healed and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to put in the time, the effort, I'm willing to look inside myself to get honest, to get vulnerable. And then you have the second person that normally walks in, they're like, I want healing, I want it now, I want it yesterday. What do I got to do? I just want to get it done with, I want to get back to how I was, et cetera, et cetera. And what I've found is the people that are looking for healing fast or like fast food healing, they normally don't find that healing very easily. They normally don't find that healing very quickly. And in fact, a lot of times when they're looking for it just fast, what they're really trying to do is they're trying to move past the situation. They're trying to get back to a state where they originally were at and not what they're going through. And so in the healing process, there's an aspect that you need to go through that healing process. You can't work past it. You have to go through the hurt. You can't just work past it and you can't avoid it. When you just avoid it, when you just box it up, compartmentalize or push it down, it ends up coming back later. It ends up affecting more of your life. It ends up infiltrating a lot different aspects. Have you heard about buffaloes and cows? Talked about it on lives, I haven't talked about it on a video. You see, out west with buffaloes and cows roaming the plains, they respond quite differently when it comes to fear, when it comes to running away from something. So when there would be thunderstorms, lightning, and things like that that would roll across the plains, what would happen is the cows, whenever they would hear the lightning and thunder, they'll run in the opposite direction. A buffalo, on the other hand, whenever it gets spooked, whenever it's scared, and actually run towards the thing that's scaring it. So more of the story, don't scare a buffalo. They might run at you, okay? But what's happening here is I want you to kind of see, as the storm comes over, the cows here, they get scared of the storm and they start running away from the storm. The problem is the storm is faster than the cow and ultimately the storm is chasing the cow. There's longer periods of time of the cow being in the storm. However, with that storm that's coming across, the buffalo, when it gets scared, it actually runs towards the storm. And what that does is it actually minimizes the length of time that that buffalo is in the storm. So what I want to talk to you today about is the idea of be the buffalo. Sometimes you have to focus on going through and running into the pain, going through that process of healing, which seems frustrating, which seems annoying, which seems hard, which is vulnerable. It's very scary to run into that. But sometimes you have to go through that before you can actually finish with it. If you run away, from, if you run away from it, if you try to find healing fast, if you try to get healing quickly, if you try to move past the situation or get back to the original place that you once were, oftentimes healing won't come very quickly, or sometimes won't come at all. There's at times where you find people that have been with a narcissist for multiple years that have tried to leave, that always come back, that have tried to leave and they can't break free of the trauma bond, even though they don't even see the narcissist and don't interact with them. That's what I try to help with people on a day-to-day -day basis with the calls is like breaking free of the trauma bond. Working through how do we think about the situation? What's the triggers? What's the emotion? What's the feelings? They all compel the thought that's kind of going underneath. And as we identify with that thought, we take that thought, we put it on trial and we say, hey, what are the facts that are support or deny this thought that you're thinking? And as people start to realize like, hey, this is what's actually going on and they compare it to the facts, we can actually rewrite and change what they're thinking and say, hey, we're going to rewire your mind with a brand new story. And that new story is going to take the place of that original story, that fable that you're thinking. And over a period of time, as people start to integrate and implement that story into their lives, they start to get clarity and they start to get truth. Because you've heard the phrase, the truth will set you free. A lot of times people are sticking with a narcissist, sociopath, psychopath, whatever. They're sticking in a toxic relationship because they're not currently living in truth. Now, sometimes that truth is hidden because of the narcissist, because they're manipulating, they're lying, they're gaslighting, all that type of stuff. But I try to go down even deeper of saying like, hey, it's not the truth of what they're saying, it's the truth of what they're doing. It's the truth of what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. 
That truth often comes with questions talking about demonstration or actions or reality, what is happening. So when the person is saying like, I just feel like they do love me because they say they love me. And then the question is posed, okay, how does the narcissist demonstrate love to you? That changes that dynamic a little bit. Because oftentimes people stay in those relationships because, because of cognitive dissonance. The idea of saying, hey, I love you, but I'm gonna treat you the opposite way. And then I treat you the opposite way. And then I say, oh, but hey, I love you. And that starts to confuse people over time. What it does over time is it starts to convince people that either what I'm experiencing right now is actually love. This is what it is. And you redefine what love is in your mind because this is all you have. Or you start thinking this is as good as it gets. Like this is all the love that either I'm worth, that's available, that's possible. This is just how life is. Oftentimes you can end at one of those two conclusions because of the fact that the narcissist isolates you that they keep you away from your friends, from your family, from people around you that would be the warning signs of saying like, hey, that doesn't seem like right. That doesn't seem healthy. So when you're going through all of this, when you're thinking through it, one of the things I need you to consider is you need to work through the pain. Now that could be working with a psychiatrist, a therapist, a counselor, with me, with a number of other creators that are out here coaching, trying to help people on a day-to-day -day basis find healing, growth, and help. And as we do that, the goal is to get people out of these relationships, help them find a healthy boundaries to be able to live their lives so they don't get sucked back in, so they don't go back to the narcissist or the toxic person in their lives, and they're able to live happy and healthy lives on their own focusing on their growth, their boundaries, so that when other people come to their lives, when they start dating again, whenever, whenever life moves forward, they don't fall back into that same pattern with the same person or with another person. So I want you to think today, like when the storms come and when the healing is there and when the pain is there and you're trying to get that healing, are you running from it or are you trying to push through it? The only way you can get true healing long-term is when you work through it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's hard, that's vulnerable, it's frustrating. Sometimes it's really annoying. I know because I do it on a day-to-day -day basis, either working with people or individually with myself. I do it on a weekly basis when I meet with my therapist every single week working through stuff. Sometimes I'll walk in and she'll be like, do we wanna deal with something old or do you wanna find something new? And it depends on how adventures we are in that moment to figure out okay what else is hidden under the surface that i still haven't healed from or i still haven't worked through what other things in the past have i not worked on that have developed me to be the person that i am now to be the person that i was a lot of times going back and looking at childhood looking at how i've been brought up how i've grown how i've developed a lot of times when people come looking for healing sometimes you have to go back to childhood and you have to say like hey what happened here what happened here and you start to see a pattern that emerges over a period of time that needs to be grown from that needs to be healthy healing that happens i hope you can do that and i hope you can focus on that we do offer places for people to do that there's several people on different platforms that offer groups, that offer support groups, that offer webinars. We've got a webinar coming up here soon on June 7th that's going to be on um, co-parenting with your toxic ex. If you're interested in that, you can check out my link. It's on my Beacons page. We can actually see and sign up for that. It's going to be a fantastic webinar with abuse coaches and also with um, life coaches and parenting coaches trying to help give a good perspective of what's going on there. If you haven't had a chance, please download the NARC app. We're trying to build that community. We've got a large group of people that are starting off in the app that are trying to get healing, growth, and change. And they're doing that by being involved with the app, learning about narcissism, understanding the red flags, setting boundaries, a lot of different things that are happening there, and also some exclusives that are coming just for the app. Right now that has weekly live events that are held inside the app. It also has monthly Zoom calls that we're doing with the second tier in the app just to be able to help connect people with people all around the globe that have suffered from narcissistic abuse and to help provide coaching and like webinar kind of format at times to be able to help people find that growth, healing, and change on a day-to-day -day basis.
Hope you'll be able to see you there. If you hadn't had a chance, subscribe here. We've got TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Would love to have you on there as well. If you need to listen on the go, you can grab it on Spotify or on uh, Amazon Music or on Apple Podcasts to be able to listen as well. Thanks so much.